Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Gas South Convention Center in Duluth, Georgia, it's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. Gwinnett Business Radio is presented by Regents Bank, Brave the Beginning, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Greetings and salutations, all wonderful listeners of Gwinnett Business Radio here on Business Radio X. It is I, your slightly annoying co-host, Stephen Julian. With me, as always, is my trusty co-host, Harper LaBelle, and we have two fantastic guests. Tim Roberts from Check Blue Apparels is here, and Vincent Al from Gondor Capital Management. I am going to be your slightly annoying host by repeating what you've already heard. Business Radio X and Gwinnett Business Radio is brought to you here at the wonderful Gas South District Convention Center. We are in the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios, and I'm not slight they're not slightly annoying. I'm slightly annoying for repeating what the voice of Mike Salmon said at the introduction. We have two great guests as I've already stated, so let's start with the first great guest, Tim Roberts from Check Blue Apparels. Tim, welcome to the studio. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Check Blue Apparels. I think you've got something to do with clothing. Tell us about your company and what you guys do. Yes, sir. I have an online store. Uh, I sell t-shirts and hoodies, and um, I'm going to expand to different types of apparels. Nice. Now, uh, Tim, uh, tell us, so apparel company it's it's something you've got into after a former career kind of talk about how you got to where you are today and doing apparel and and kind of where it came from the thing about me I love creativity I love a good idea I think there's nothing more transformative than a good idea I love reading license plates I love reading t-shirts that are creative when I mean transformative someone can have a t-shirt on and it'll make you smile it'll make you think I just love ideas, mm. and I came up with a couple of them, and I said, well, hey, if I don't see them on a T-shirt, why not just you know, start my own company? That's interesting because uh, when we go on family vacations, the license plate game, you've, you, if you like reading license plates, then I'd want you to be on my team when we're traveling. And are we there yet? Have you had any of those moments, right, when you're with the kids? So, hey, let's look for Nebraska, or let's look for Oklahoma plates, exactly. whatever it is. Exactly. But you're finding, I would imagine, the creativity is, wow, those plates look really cool. I like the way they design them. I like the way the lettering is contrasting against the background. And, and states now are doing that. How do you apply some of that to the creativity with your shirts and being able to come up with original and new ideas that you're able to prosper from because you're able to put them in production. One thing, when I watch TV, and one night, you know, you say the license plate game, I kept hearing accountability, accountability. And one night I counted from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., I heard accountability 34 times. Ooh. So I said. Message received. Exactly. De-escalation. So that's why my shirts, uh, my favorite shirts are accountability square, de-escalation square, because it takes two. And I think it's great for relationships, whether it's uh, husbands in the workplace. It takes two to de-escalate. Accountability, it takes two. That's why it's accountability square, de-escalation square. Nice. Just to kind of be slightly annoying with the idea of the license plate. I lived for four years in Virginia. Mm -hmm. There's no state that has more novelty license plates than the state of Virginia. And, in fact, it was always fun because you see so many of them and – So many of the common ones are taken. People have to be creative. I assume then that also is kind of part of your shirts. And and so you've even given us one example of a de-escalation squared. You put the squared because it takes two people to do it. You can't do it on a one-way street. What are some of the other, you know, give us another example or or maybe your absolute favorite shirt that you've ever made uh, where you kind of did this thing where people, you know, almost like a license plate of, wait, I think the words, if you put all those letters together... Or maybe it's a double meaning. I don't know. So talk about talk about some of that. Well, I'm from Atlanta, born and raised. I love every Atlanta team, whether it's Braves, Hawks, Falcons, United. Mm-hmm. So any time the premise of my AT Hale shirts is that anyone comes to the city of Atlanta and they are playing the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, if they come to the AT Hale. They're going to catch A.T. Hale. <laughs> and he is wearing a shirt. It is a white, simple white shirt with A.T. as black letters. And then the word hell spelled out twice, one vertically and one horizontally, to make an L. So, exactly. Because I will confess at the beginning, I was like, what's the, it's hell. What, what the hell is that shirt saying? So I, I put it together and see the letter L. So I like that. Exactly. If you go to my website, checkblueapparels.com, I have different uh, designs for A.T. Hale. 
that spells it out. I like it. I like it. Tim, a little of your background. You said you're from here. You went to high school here. And then what happened? When were you good enough in high school? Uh, Tim's a rather large individual. Six, five. Is that about right? Six, seven. Six, seven. And uh, 300. And I'm working on it. You're working on it. <laughs> now, in your prime, how big were you in high school? I was six, five, 265 coming out of high school. Hmm. Went to college my freshman year. And I grew an inch. I got there that August. I was six, five. When I got home that Christmas, I was uh, six, six, 294. They feed you good in college, so. And you well, were lifting weights and adding muscle, too. Correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. And you went to Southern Mississippi. Yes, sir. Some guy named Brett Favre, I think is the name. Was he a teammate of yours? Yes, sir. He, yeah. uh, he and I were freshmen together. Yeah, how about that? University of Southern Mississippi. Yeah. Now, you did a red shirt, but you played there five years to do four, right? And then what happened after that? I was drafted in the fifth round by the Houston Oilers. Do you have to sing Love You Blue? Was it was were they still in the dome back then? I know, huh? I love that song. Love You Blue. And then the Houston Oilers, right? He's Houston Oilers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Warren Moon was there, obviously. I, I mentioned with, a couple other guys. Go yeah, ahead. I played with Warren Moon, um, Ray Childress, the great defensive actor. So I was his backup for a while. Then in nineteen ninety five, I became the first restricted free agent signed by the New England Patriots. And I played there under the great Bill Parcells. 96, I went to the Super Bowl. You just missed it, didn't you? I know it. I know it. I hurt my knee in 95 and then sat out a year and did a year with Kansas City in 97. Oddly enough, that Super Bowl in 96 would have been against your former teammate. I know. Brett. I watched that game. It was <laughs> hard to watch. Yeah. Well, how did your NFL career, which spanned four and then with training camp and all that, a little longer, four mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. how did that help from a disciplinarian standpoint, to think outside the box, what were some of the uh, key characteristics for, that you learned that got you there into the league that you were able to take over into your life after football? You learn preparation, patience. You learn working with people, having empathy for people. Because, you know, sometimes people fumble the ball in, in football as in life, so you have to uh, be patient and, and work together. Sometimes it's, it's okay to say, hey, it's all right. And accountability, I imagine. you got to be there on time, don't you? Exactly. Yep. My shirts, Accountability Square, De-Escalation Square, if you go on the website, you will see Accountability Square is on the front, but you have the option on the back. Uh, there are some affirmations on the back. Give grace. Be patient. Remain respectful. So you can order the shirt, and on the back, you have the option of putting whatever affirmation you want. Mm. So it would be customized. Exactly. Absolutely. Now, where did you come up with some of the slogans that you were able to uh, put together to where you go, you know what, I really like this one, but uh, some of the others I'm not really sure of. I'm, I'm not ready yet to go to that level with that specific shirt. Well, I thought that they would be main components to de-escalate, mm-hmm. uh, remain respectful, be patient, give grace. So uh, those components would you know, facilitate de-escalation. We're speaking with uh, Tim Roberts. He is the owner of Check Blue Apparels, uh, checkblueapparels.com, if you want to go check out the AT Hell and some of the other uh, designs that he has. When was the first shirt? Uh, you know, How long have you been kind of building the Check Blue Apparels brand? Well, one thing I did, and they say you shouldn't do, I want to make sure that I owned it. So mm-hmm. I own AT Hell. Okay. I own Accountability Square, De-Escalation Square. That is registered. I have a new brand or a new idea that I came out, and I'm going through the process of registering this. And you're not going to break that news on this episode. We'll have to bring you back for that one. Is that, is <laughs> there that you go. Is, yeah, there you a, go. Tell me about that process, if you don't mind, because I remember years ago, Pat Riley, the coach of the Lakers, after they had won their second, mm-hmm. he goes, we're going to three-peat. And he ended up registering that name. So if you buy a shirt that has three-peat on it, Pat Riley gets a couple pennies out of that. that mm-hmm. I didn't realize uh, the process – uh, that you've had to go through. Tell me a little bit about that and what it meant for you to be able to do such. I got to tell you, it's tedious. Uh, I started in 2021, and Accountability Square is just uh, in December of 2023. I just got approval. AT Hill was last March. I mean, they do what you call an office action, and you file paperwork, and they come back and say, okay, we need this. Hmm. And then you, 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 you file it, and then they just say, we need this. And that could take – because it's the government. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot it, of, a lot of hoops, a lot of boxes. Exactly. Yeah. But it, yeah. it's satisfying to, to it, say, I own. Yeah, exactly. You know. yeah. Is it just the lettering itself, the verbiage? Is it the size and characteristic of the logo? Is there more to it that I don't know that would be involved with that process? As long as it's AT Hill, the font, 
the color doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No one can trespass on AT Hill. Yeah, I like that. I, I was going to ask uh, with with the ones you've talked about and kind of look into the future. What's around the corner uh, for Check Blue Apparels? What are what are some of the Again, you you certain certain things you can't you can't do breaking news for us. We'll have to bring you back. But mm-hmm. but w- what do you see as the future of the website and, and the apparel brand? Well, uh, with the help of your loyal listeners, I like to expand it to jackets, t- more t shirts, um, jeans, hats, and I, I really want to grow the the brand. And is there is there opportunity to maybe do some things that you don't necessarily have to get trademarked? That you don't necessarily have to to own the actual wording. Maybe there's some specific, Hey, I'll do someone's wedding or I'll do, you know, I'll do shirts for, for certain events or, you know, are there some things that you don't have to go through as much of a process for the creative things that you've, that you've done? I mean, you could do those things. I'm a stickler. I like to own what I put out. That's, that comes from the background. There's the disciplinary and there's the preparation, right? Exactly. Is that where that's coming out? Yeah. Now some fun shirts. Uh, I didn't tell you about the fun shirts I have. Well, come on, you got to tell us about the fun shirts. Too. All right, and this is geared to, for, towards women. They they're very fickle about their age. So I started with thirty. So you know, instead of a t-shirt saying I'm thirty-one years old, forty years old, I have thirty-five years old, forty-five years old, and it goes from thirty-five to ninety-five. So that's for women who so they can wear that t-shirt throughout their thirties. Does that make sense? Uh, it does. It, see, I would have done the the four and then the different symbols that cr- that are curse words. That's what I would have done. But I like the I like the thirty five forty five. And by the way, you can have that. You can go trademark that. That's yeah. I, I really like that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah. So you can. That, there's a secondary line, and I won't even ask for anything because I'm a giving man. Right. So we have a brand new year. Uh, a lot of birthdays coming up. So if anyone want to get a shirt for their wife, right. girlfriend, yep. aunt, grandmama. Um, I, I go from 35 to 95 years <laughs> I like old that. I like that. and in different colors and soon coming out the 30 blank different symbols. Okay. There you Possibly. go. Possibly. Yeah. Excellent. My grandmother lied about her age so long <laughs> that when she was in her eighties, she couldn't remember how old she was. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like this what it is. I like the creativity of that. But then uh, let's say uh, someone says, uh, uh, you, you mentioned, let's say, a family reunion, and they want to make a specific shirt. Or they have an idea for a shirt. And we, could you make it with this? And they would have the font and the logo and all that. Is that something? And they could specialize. Does there need to be a certain size of the order? Do I have to make 50 to 100 or 200 in order to make that happen? And how, how would that work? Go to the website, order the shirt, and whatever you need. Well, if there's a shirt, so, so you you're don't... willing to work with people to to kind of produce their vision for something. They of would course, want. Okay. of course. There you go. So I think, and you've done a great job of already kind of giving the website. So uh, let's let's give the website one more time, and then if there's any other way that you want to uh, let people get in contact with you, if the website's the main one, then then let's stick with that. And and let me before you give all that information, let me just ask this last question. What kind of feedback have you heard already? What What are some of the people saying about this, the products they've already ordered or the way they've worked with you? The women think that the 30 to 95, they think that's very cute. I get a lot of good feedback from A.T. Hill. I would love to uh, coordinate with the Falcons. And I can see uh, 80,000 people in the stadium saying A.T. Hill, A.T. Hill. Let's give them A.T. Hill. So anybody out there with the Falcons, let me know. And how do people uh, how do people find you again? Give the website and any other information you want to give. www.checkblueapparels.com. Tim Roberts, owner of Check Blue Apparels. I would just tell you continue to give uh, everybody AT hell with your great designs. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. We'll be back right after this. Life is full of ifs, but if you want to cash flow like a pro and get paid up to two days early. Safeguard against surprises and supercharge your savings. Regions Life Banking makes it possible. Regions Bank embrace the infant life. Regions Bank, member FDIC. For the first time ever, the Atlanta Gladiators podcast will now be on Business Radio X. Be on the lookout for new interviews each week as Director of Broadcasting and Communications Liam Donimer chats with Gladiator players, coaches, and even representatives from corporate partners. For tickets, partnerships, and more, visit AtlantaGladiators.com or call our front office at 770-497-5100 to chat with a Gladiator representative today. Atlanta Gladiators Hockey, draw your sword. We're here at the Gas South District with some wonderful guests. We love 
having them on, and we also love Subaru of Gwinnett. They're proud sponsors here. Love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. You can enjoy huge savings and a hassle-free experience at Subaru of Gwinnett, where people sell cars. Visit SubaruofGwinnett.com. You can join their family today. You can come and see the difference. If you're already a Subaruist, then check out their Facebook page for the latest news offers and community events. Thanks to uh, producer Mike. That was a that was a top-notch countdown for you coming back from break. That was awesome. Yeah, the well stubby done. fingers were going yeah, three, yeah. two, one. <laughs> it was it. great. Uh, happy to welcome uh, uh, our second guest, Vincent Al. He is from Gondor Capital Management. Uh, Vincent, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. Uh, Gondor Capital Management is a hedge fund that was launched back in uh, 2013. Actually, I believe there's two different hedge funds. Uh, Tell us about your company and what you guys do. So again, thanks for having us, having me on today. Gondor Capital Management is a long, short, fundamental fund with an options component. We focus only on U.S. listed equities. And we do have two funds. One is for U.S. investors, and the other fund is for non everybody else on the planet. For those people who are kind of beginners, or maybe they think they're very advanced and, and, and just are looking to get some more information, when you say long, short, you know, a lot of people go, oh, you're invested in the market. Yes and no. So uh, the, the goal of the fund is to be very different from what people hear when they hear the Dow Jones finished up or down today. Talk about what a long-short fund does. So traditionally, people would buy investments or stock, and the market went higher, they would be up. they come home and watch TV, oh, I made money today. And then on some other days, they watch TV, the market's down, oh, we lost money today. It's a very simple, direct correlation. Whereas with us, we like to make money on both sides. Of, of the equation, we're, we're not correlated to the markets. So uh, without getting too lost in the weeds, how does someone make money? Because I think everybody kind of understands, oh, when the market goes up, that the value of most stocks went up. So how do, how do you make money when the market is not going up? On a day when the market is down, what are some of the strategies that the fund uses to, to make money on those days? So f- for us, we use a lot of hedging. We use options to hedge our positions to ensure that when there's volatility, when there's times of dislocation, we're balanced out. So for someone, thank you for all those explanations. So if someone's going, that's all great. Break it. Give me the bottom line. Uh, I know you're not going to say, so because of that, we'll make money every single day. Obviously, you can't guarantee that. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Please read prospectus carefully, yada, yada, yada. I, I would ask you to say, what is what should someone's expectation be if they put money in with Gondor Capital Management? They're, they're not going to go up and down as much as the market. So what should they expect? Should they kind of expect slow and steady wins the race, more up days than down days? Kind of, kind of what, what would you use as your headline for that? That's a great question. If I had a chance to, you know, to do our firm as a DBA, I would call it avoidance capital. Mm. I think the first mantra for us is don't lose money. Rule number two, don't lose money. <laughs> rule number three, see rule one and two. <laughs> And I think that's really important to say that yeah. because I'm not only the CIO of the fund, I'm a, an investor in the fund. Mm. I share the same economics as all of our investors. So when you have that kind of, when you're an investor, that mentality really puts an ownership to it in your process of thinking. Mm. Because a lot of times people will say, sure, I'll make, a, I'll make investment decisions, win or lose. It's not my money. Yeah. Okay. Or some other people would say, hey, I recommend a, an idea to you. I make commission on the way in, I make commission on the way out. How did you do as an investor? Well, let's cross our fingers on that one. And for me, directly, as the person who makes all the investment decisions, it's a different perspective because, again, a significant part of my net worth is in the fund. And, and while you can't officially say, hey, we have no down days, if, if, that, if those are your three main goals, one, two, and three, try not to lose money, then, then at least peop, you should be able to go, look, uh, uh, on – if the market has this many down days, we're going to have a lot fewer because of the strategy that we're trying to do. So we're going to be up a whole lot more than we're going to be down. And you've probably got the numbers that you can point to of performance. Well, I would share that we're not correlated to the market. And I think that's really important to say that because, frankly speaking, that if you have a, a someone that tells you, hey, I'm making you money because the market went higher, and they tell you I lost money because the market went lower, don't blame me. 
then you have to understand, like, well, what's your value to you as an investor, as a client? I think the value for us is that we want to make our, our clients money on an absolute basis. And I think the last two years is a really good example. For example, this year, we were up double digits, but we lagged the benchmark index, the S&P 500 index. But last year, in 2022, when the index was down over 20%, we were also up double digits. So we were 30 points minimum better than everybody else. And I think that's where our value comes in. I think we're a good counterweight to other people's, uh, to an individual investor's portfolio they have elsewhere. For those people who have never heard the term non-correlated, that is a great example. Yeah, one year we were close. Market's up 15. We're up about 10, 11, double digits. The other year, the market's down 20. We're up double digit. That is non-correlated. You are not performing. You're performing very differently in the market, especially when things are bad. That's correct. Yeah. And I think that's really what we like to directly demonstrate to our investors. That's where our value added is. You've been doing this. You've got some gray hair now. You've been doing this for quite a while. When did you have a aha moment to where, no, I really think this is something. I not only can do this, but I can do it really good. I'm going to be fantastic at this. I have whatever it takes. I didn't have an aha moment. I started this job when I was barely 18 years old. I was in college. And I got my first job as a stockbroker trainee, a cold caller, smile and dial. And did you have a Rolodex back then? or did no. you, you know, oh, just It's a funny file. enough. The, the white pages. <laughs> the funny, oh, they, they, they give you what they DMB cards to give you. Yeah. yeah. What happens is that I answer an ad in my career office in my college. It was $5 an hour, but it had a very important component, free food college kid and i'm not playing football for you know a university <laughs> like my friend over here so f- feeding me was brilliant i'm like great yeah and then i just started doing it and i i'm so blessed i fell in love with it i absolutely fell in love with it you know because i watched my father work 40 45 years at one of the uh, major banks in this country he trekked you know, three hours round trip to raise a family, support a family. And he didn't like his job, but he did it to raise a family. So the fact that I'm able to do what I do, it's, it's fantastic. To be in love with what you do is absolutely brilliant. You know, I work 60-hour weeks, 80-hour weeks. I work 100-hour weeks. I've never complained, never said anything. It's, you know, it's, it's so in my DNA, I'm so ingrained in it. Okay, there isn't really literally a moment in my daily life outside before my family, before my God, that I don't think about, hey, you know, I am 24 seven. But that's also truthfully, that's also part of the business. I am I mean, managing investments, but I am in the information business. Okay, my job is to get information, dissect information and make money from that information and that the one thing that's changed from when I started over 30 years ago is the speed of information. There's no internet when I started. Okay, there was no. I started before American Online, the, the you know even the telephone modem and so on. Bing bing. So yeah, bing. yeah So thing. now today, with stocks inform- were still trading in uh, fractions, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. one eighth, three three teenies, quarters. Yes. You were you were going to the library and watching the value and doing the value line, right? Yeah, uh, value, were, value yeah. line. Yeah. So now information is so so fast. It's not just about you know, it's about who gets the information first, but also how you dissect it. And that's really important to say that. One of the edges our firm has is experience. A lot of people tell you, yeah, we, we could use quant, use formulas to, to replicate. But the reality is when you're managing money real time, that is totally different. It's like, you know, it's like when you watch broadcasters on sports channels talking about how a player should perform in the field, right? You know what? Okay, you can say that you're in the booth. Let's try you go get in the field, okay? It's 10 degrees outside. You're standing there. You can barely hold your hands. And the 350-pound guy is about to break your ribs. Are you going to throw the ball out in three seconds, make a completion, a 20-yard pass? It's a whole different dynamic. So with experience, me being on the street for over 30 years, I can't tell you how many times I've been bloodied. Got my mouth punched, my nose broken. I've lost millions, and I'm 
not bragging about that. But those losses left a mark on me, left a scar on me. And you learn from that. You learn from that. And that, that tuition I paid has been transferred to what we are today. So even though our fund is only 11 years old, the strategy is, all, is 30 years old. It was 30 years in the making. So which is why, again, in 2022, when people are running around saying, for example, oh, inflation is this, inflation is that, people were, were going crazy over the rates going from zero to 5%. I grew up with rates at 9%. My first mortgage was nine. Having gone through that, it's almost like everything slowed down for me because I lived through it. I wasn't panicking. I wasn't running around with my head on, hair on fire. So I think experience is a really important component that when uh, in today's market, how you view things, how you see things. Yeah, too bad, Stephen. He doesn't have any passion about what he's doing. Yeah, that no experience, no passion. All right, knowledge. full disclosure, Vincent. I've known this for a while. You're a New Yorker, right? You're a Yankees, Jets. Uh, by the way, I Knicks figured guy. that out in about 120 <laughs> seconds. But. Okay, I have to stop you. I'm not a Jets fan. That's just, I didn't say Jets. I said Yankees and uh, Giants and, I and Knicks. Jets. I did I say Jets? I think. Can did we I play, really? Can we play that? Take All right. Please? If I did, I made a mistake. All right, Giants, of course. Uh, but you talk about your passion and, and things like that. Uh, on a serious note, uh, on September 11th, 836, you were in the North Tower. Yeah, I was. And to be honest with you, not a big fan talking about it. I would just say I was there that morning on the 86th floor on 11. By all rights, I should be dead. I mean, let's, I mean, let's be Plain totally— Plain hit below you. Yeah, below you. Tint, and you still got out. Yeah, let's be totally honest about this. There's no reason other than— God's blessings that I'm sitting here today talking to anybody who's hearing my voice today. But I will also share, that's also part of our firm's culture. As a leader of the firm, people say on cards, greetings, slogans, your carpe diem, they'll say, live every day as if it's your last, to and, the so fullest, and so on, to fullest, yeah, and so on, yeah, right? And... We actually do that. We don't talk about it. We actually live it. Mm -hmm. At our firm, our culture is we come. We play the full nine innings. We, we come to work every day, and, and we battle. We grind. You know, we certainly cannot control the markets, okay? but we certainly can control the things we do as a firm. And we do the little things right. Doing the little things right means we do the big things right. At 6 o'clock when day's over, our team, however the month went, we're going to celebrate. We're going to say we did the best we can. And we're done. The very next day, we're back in the office. It's a brand new day. It's day one. The scorecard is zero. That's our performance. It's zero. Okay? And we had the same attitude. We, we run hard. And that's really who we are. And that's really because, again, like, we're, I have a gift that I've, I've been given. I had a second chance that I certainly most, I would confess, I don't deserve, okay? But I got a second chance, and I'm here today. And the opportunity to really do well for our clients who entrust us with their confidence, we match money for, for people to help them. We match money for endowments, foundations, to know that teachers, to know that students are benefiting we're speaking with uh, Vincent Au. He is the CIO, the Chief Investment Officer at Gondor Capital Management. And Vincent, I just wanted to give you an opportunity. Um, again, as Harper said, you know, I wish you'd have a little more passion. Um, but clearly, you know, that has come out of a lot of your uh, life experiences and, and also just your experience on Wall Street. So you've got a room full of listeners who all invest some level somewhere with some money. And obviously, you would love for them to entrust Gondor Capital Management with some or all of that money. But I want to ask you, as someone who manages a fund, as someone who has been around the market, and yes, you do a long, short, and non-correlated, but would you have some good advice for, for investors, apart from the best advice of, hey, let Gondor help you with some of that, what, what advice would you give today's investors, rather than ask you your opinion of the markets or where you think the markets are going? Because I know I predict volatility in the market, right? Greatest quote ever said about investment investing, but... What, what advice would you give to investors today? What, what would you tell them? I think the first thing is, again, I'm not, I, I was a financial advisor like you for over 20 years. Then I crossed the border to, to the buy side. I think the first thing I would tell all clients is 
know what you own. I I I have a, f- a friend. He he and I talked. He has a uh, an account at a firm, and he showed me his 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 statements. He couldn't even explain to me what he's invested in, and it's your money. You should know what you invest in. I mean, you know, if, when, when I was the financial advisor, that was always my rule. It's your money. It's not my money. I'm just a steward of it. I'm here to help you. Even at Alpha and Gondor, whenever we take on a new client, new investor, my first conversation is always, you have a concern, question, you should ask. Call, email me. I mean, I always have the answer. But we have three law firms, an accounting firm, an auditing firm, a fund admin. I have a compliance firm, risk firm. If I don't have the answer, somebody of ours has the answer for you. But ultimately, you should never go to sleep being concerned about what we do. Mm. How is your money invested? Because it's your money. Mm. So the, my first rule for any listener is please know what you're investing in. Number two, make sure you trust the person you're working with. We spend more time. Like, at my background, I have two, two boys. And I can't, when, uh, when I live in New York City... I spent a crazy amount of time vetting a nanny only because I, I would take my, my babies around. I walk around, I would see nannies on the cell phones doing everything except watching the kids. So I had a healthy distrust of people watching the two most valuable assets of my life, my two boys, right? And I see people today that take no time in talking to, hey, who you are, why should I entrust my money with you? Tell me about you. And they don't. And you really should. You should go drill down why this person should have your money. Okay? You know, you could you can accept mistakes. It happens. You can accept lagging performance. That happens. As long as you know that this person is giving their best efforts for you, doing their best for you, you're okay with that. Okay, what you can't have is someone you're like, well, you'll recommend this product to me because there's a sales contest going on. And if you sell the most of this product, you get a nice Bahamas cruise to your family. So you're not actually doing it for my vested interests, right? And I always hated that as a financial advisor. I absolutely hate it because I actually like my clients. I care about my clients, right? And, but the problem was that when the investment went south, it wasn't my branch manager, my sales manager calling the clients, hey, we lost your money. It was me. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was me. It was the clients yelling at me, right? You're an idiot for recommending this to me. Yeah, you're right. I'm a stupid ass. I'm dumb, okay? I should have paid more attention. Yeah. So I think to your listeners, please know what you're invested in, but please also know that you have a partner that you could trust as a spouse, right? It's like a lawyer, mm-hmm. an accountant, it's like anything else. Make sure this is, a guy, this is a person that you could absolutely trust with your money. And that for us at and our And you're firm, vested in it as well, yeah. right? You're, yeah. You have told us you're, yeah. you're invested in your own fund. You, you've got skin in the game just like I do, right? Yeah, absolutely. But again, you know, ultimately, you know, you got to be able to say to that person, I'm okay because you're in this foxhole with me. Mm-hmm. You're in the trenches with me, okay? You know, I can't tell you. I'll, I'll tell one story. We got whooped in 2020, and we got beaten down hard in 2020. I made a bad read. It was just my fault. No way around that one. I mean, it was a bad read. Well, you weren't part. alone. Everybody else in the market was struggling I, you know what? as well. I, I, I don't like – what other people do in my business, I only take do – I have a different standard, okay? I have a, I have a different okay. standard. But I, I, Fair enough, but – Truth be told, there were other people in there were. January, February, March that didn't understand and see the same things that COVID was bringing out that, that you needed to see as well. Go ahead. I, I would say to you that I was so gratified. I can't tell you how many of our investors and clients, when we spoke on the phone, because I, I made it a point to call every single investor in our fund, everyone, that, hey, we just got beat up. And I wasn't going to let the, the, the email, the postman deliver the bad news to you. I'm telling you right now, it's bad. And I can't tell you how many people, our investors, were, they were upset that we lost money, of course. It was our first down, you know, ever, okay? Because we were up every year before that. And people were more concerned about me. They were like, are you okay? 
because I obviously caught him, and I sounded like I was on it on like Dr. Kavorkian. I was on death row because I'm so emotionally, you know, involved. I'm so, you know, this it's so ingrained. This me, my, I have a lot of pride in my performance. Mm. People were more concerned about me. They were like, "Are you okay?" I can't even tell you that. How many people from from clients in the United States to to Europe to London to Israel? They were like, "You're know, concerned about me," and I've really meant a lot to me because they understood what I put into it, yeah. and they believe that I do have your best interest at heart. Mm. Okay, I will I will run through that wall for you, and it's it's un- unspoken. I don't have to say it. Because I've done it. Mm. They've always known I've done it. And I'll do it today, did it yesterday, and I'll do it tomorrow for them. So for those people who want to find out more about Gondor Capital Management, clearly it's a hedge fund. So for those that don't know, this is not something you can just, you know, oh, I'm just going to go on this website. I mean, yeah. So so how do people find out more information to see if they possibly could be a part of the Gondor Capital Management family with and hire you to manage some of their money? I think the first thing you would have to do is if you'd like to know more about us, send us an email at info at gondorcap.com. Okay. We have a web page, but it's a splash page only because there are so many rules that govern what we can and cannot say. So we take the we take the easy way out. We just put a splash page on there. Yeah. And if you'd like to know more about us, please feel free to contact us and we'll certainly revert back to you. So info at gondorcap.com. Gondor is G-O-N-D-O-R cap.com. By the way, last thing, I love it. Gondor, for those that don't know, you named it after one of the one of the lands in Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series. Absolutely. And the reason you did that, as you told me before you came on the air, is because... Well, I'm a lot, huge fan of Lord of the Rings, but also I spent like a day at Barnes and Nobles looking for a name for the fun. And I just, every name I wanted to get, someone else had it ready. Yeah. There's so, thousands of funds out there and they've taken up all the names, but yes. I think you got one of the best ones. So well, thank you. info at gondorcap.com. Vincent Al, uh, chief investment officer, CIO at Gondor Capital Management. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me again today. Absolutely. So before we finish up the show, I do want to remind everybody that Gwinnett Business Radio is brought to you by Regions Bank. They're here to help your business's financial future stay on track. Regions Commercial Banking has a team of experienced bankers in Gwinnett who can guide you in all areas of growth. Get the resources you need so every step can move you closer to your business goals. To learn more, visit regions.com forward slash commercial dash banking. Don't forget the dash. Regions Bank. Member. F-D-I-C. And Mike is our producer because he's starting the outro and he wouldn't ring the bell. So for Harper LaBelle and for our guests, Mike, you're playing the music over our guests, Tim Roberts from Check Blue Apparels and Vincent Al from Gondor Capital Management. This is your slightly annoying host, Stephen Julian, for my trusty co-host, Harper, and for mean producer, Mike, who played the music. We'll catch you next time. Have a great day, everybody. On Gwinnett Business Radio. 